Uh, bringing it back here, though, the grains of sand in the hourglass continue to trickle down and out. Tomorrow, only four days are left for Congress to reach an agreement on a whole messy list of issues, or else our government shuts down. Right now, the talks, the handshaking, reaching across the aisle and then pulling back, and everybody's furious, everybody seems to be working together, and then they're not. This is not going smoothly. Right now, instead of sitting at the negotiating table, lawmakers are scattered across the country celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. Day in their specific states, including New York Democratic Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, who we showed earlier. She attended a rally earlier in Brooklyn. We had another congressional member clearly not sitting at the bargaining table, Republican representative and Senate candidate Martha McSally of Arizona. She attended a very large Martin Luther King Jr. Day march. So we've got all kinds of things going on. Events for Martin Luther King Jr.'s remembrance, racism accusations front and center at the White House, and congressional leaders who, of course, are home and not participating in late-breaking budget talks. How do we get there? Instead of looking at a stalemate in just three and a half days where it really comes down to the crunch time. Let us bring in our guests from both sides of the aisle, Democratic strategist and National Bar Association PAC chair Scott Bolden and former chief of staff to Senator Mike Lee, Republican strategist Boyd Matheson. Uh, Boyd, I will begin with you because in the end, uh, the president is, is sending out telegraph messages saying, well, it's really the, the Democrats fault. But what, where's the role of the Republicans who control both the House and the Senate where we're trying to get this budget deal done? And it appeared a week ago Friday that we were getting close to two groups of bipartisan leaders really kind of fighting it out to be the first to say we've got ourselves a deal. Yeah, it's amazing that they've scattered uh, across the country, and here they are, you know, celebrating Martin Luther King. What they what they ought to do is quit talking about him and start acting like him, and get to the table, uh, and get this done. And sadly, I think we're going right. to I think we're going to see what happens. What always happens in Washington, both sides are going to raise all kinds of money this week, and the Democrats are going to claim if you know this is going to be bad, and Grandma's going off the cliff, and the Republicans are going to claim that you know that we're on our way to socialism, and they're all going to raise hundreds of millions of dollars. And you, and on Friday evening before the government government shuts down, they're going to cut another short-term deal, which creates uncertainty for the people, uncertainty for the markets, and that's bad for the country. The Republicans ought to be leading on a day like today, uh, and the Democrats ought to join them at the table. Uh, let me throw, throw some of this on the Democrats' shoulders, and no one's blameless here. Um, I, I have to say, Scott, where <laughs> is Senator Schumer? Uh, he's nowhere to be seen on this, uh, this bill. He wasn't anywhere to be seen on the tax bill. It appeared, though, that he and Chuck and Nancy had gone, gotten the deal the last time we, we hit the continuing resolution back on December 22nd, saying, you know what, we, we've talked to the president, we'll get it done. Uh, and now President Trump, with his racism discussion, is back on, on his heels. They could capitalize on this and get DACA done. And yet, where is he? Where is Senator Schumer? Well, I'm certain he's very active, and so he is around. Uh, Trump's racist comments certainly don't help. And I'll be honest with you, Chuck and Nancy probably have Trump fatigue over this. I don't think his racism comment uh, certainly doesn't help, but I don't think it's dispositive of whether they get a deal or not. It's just another chapter in his bad history of being president. But what I do think is this. There was a bipartisan bill that was the subject of that meeting that Dems and Republicans had presented to the president. Yes, yes. And it was the president who who thought that it, would, it, it needed more work, i.e., then he made his negative statement or, or the alleged racist statement, and so now we're back at square one. Or better yet, we don't know where they are now because he's not for it. Uh, I think, I tend to think that if both stand up and act like, act like Martin Luther King Jr., we won't do a, a delay bill where we come okay. back and look at it in two weeks. They could certainly get it done, but there will have to be a lot of compromises. Boys, what is the one thing that will avoid a government shutdown Friday beyond a continuing resolution. Yeah, I, I think it's only I think it's only a continuing resolution. I don't think the DACA and immigration is yeah. going to get solved by Friday, although it should. This is the amazing thing. I bet we could do it in, in 24 hours because everybody on both sides of the aisle agree we need to have border security. We need to have a good entry exit system. We need to have an easier legal process uh, to get people in the country. Everybody agrees with that. But the political parties and outside interests, their interest is not to get this solved. Their interest okay. is to raise money off it. And so that's the biggest hang-up is we're allowing people to divert what should be the focus of this. Yeah. And let's, let's get it done. It is uh, possible okay. to do immigration. Scott, well, well, literally but, seven but it's seconds. But Donald Trump that's oh, doing ahead. that. 
Liz, but it's, it's Trump that is diverting that because of his uh, because of his words and acts. But the bottom line is this: if we got DACA and border security without including the wall or the lottery or some of that other stuff the Republicans want, they could get it done. It'd For be now. real simple, a what? simple bill. Okay, well, let's hope. Uh, again, we're down to what about seven grains of sand in the in the hourglass, <laughs> guys? Thank maybe, you maybe very four. much, <laughs> Scott and Keep Boyd. Keep hope alive. We do appreciate exactly. We do appreciate you being here on MLK Junior Day.